All right. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday. Finally made it here to the weekend. 12.30 p.m. here, California time, November 8th, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the globe shows a uh, 4.6 here across the area of it looks like the northern end here of the Curl Cam Chatka Trench. Notice a line of activity here from about this region eastward here across the Aleutian Trench, even into Canada, getting in on some earthquake activity. That tells me right here that we got to watch the Aleutian Trench. That's a lot of movement here in the last 24 hours, and it's on a broad scale. No big earthquake activity. Those are a bunch of fours, but uh, I still think we could be looking at some larger scale movement potentially about ready to take place in this area. Now, up into Canada, uh, 4.9 coming in within the last hour. This follows a 4.1 earlier this morning it is uh, up into the region around the Yukon area uh, a little bit of earthquake activity here in the last week or so it looks like uh, of course some of these earthquakes don't make it up on the globe but there is some smaller quake activity around the Canada area again way up into the Yukon territory area um, but you know this is just a little pattern that's taken place out here in the last 24 hours all across this region uh, showing some elevated seismic activity uh, I don't know if there's anything, um, let me check out the satellite view here, aside from mountains up here, I'm sure some beautiful area, not a whole lot of population density, that's perfect. Um, yeah, I don't see anything of any unusual activity there at the surface, just uh, a little bit of earthquake movement up here across the mountain range um, in the Yukon area. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that folks, uh, across the Aleutian Trench here as well. Got some forest stirring up out here. Some from yesterday, some from today as well. And some activity across the Curl Cam Chatka from this morning as well. Watch the northern ring of uh, the Pacific Plate up here. That's def definitely active. Uh, California region here. A couple of smaller quakes out in northern California. Uh, really nothing big going on there for now. The latest, a 2.6 earthquake here. In a slight little cluster around the Redway area underneath this region about 14 miles deep that's going to be associated here uh, potentially with a strain across the cascadia subduction zone bay area pretty quiet not a whole lot going on there today uh, minimal movement outside of reno up here this is the sierraville area this is mainly from yesterday a couple of smaller microquakes southern california well getting uh, some activity right here around the uh, lebec area this is from uh mainly from yesterday there's another one in there today and it's right around the interchange here of the garlock fault shear zone and the interaction with the plate boundary the san andreas fault so that's rather interesting here after all the uh, past few weeks of elevated seismic activity in the southern california area so we do have to watch that uh, again it's right there where i expect uh you know potentially the big one could unzip from that region it's a bend area uh, and the strain builds up there southward into the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, across this area of Death Valley, still seeing some scattered activity out there. Uh, let's see what we got for 2.5 and above. Nothing above 2.5, so mainly small microquake activity, but nonetheless, that is still earthquake activity. Just because it's below a, a certain threshold does not mean it does not exist. That is still some earth movement going on out there in the state of California. Uh, throughout the Intermountain West area, Montana region, getting some smaller earthquake activity there today. Yellowstone National Park, let's go check that real quick here and see what we have. Uh, yesterday had a little bit of earthquake activity there in the two range. Today a little bit different, not a whole lot going on. Uh, but I am seeing some type of uh, outside interference reading here showing up on Purple Mountain. Um, Mary Lake as well uh, so let's go see what's causing that it's either going to be wind or magma movement I don't think it's magma so we're going to verify or it could be even rain and snow let me see what we got here wind gust is really not all that windy out there across Yellowstone right now uh, fairly calm conditions uh, weather radar not a whole lot showing up out there as well Let's see. So it's showing up on Purple Mountain, Mary Lake here. And the reading that I'm talking about is going to be this thick line uh, here in the last 
hour or so, unless they made a uh, station adjustment here to these stations, you know, far as the amplitude goes, uh, that's what it could be. I'm not seeing that reading showing up uh, across any other seismograph stations that are nearby, aside from the Purple Mountain and Mary Lake area. Of course, if it, if it would be like, well, it's over here as well, Parker Peak. So that leads me to believe here that they've made an instrument adjustment here within the last, uh, oh, it looks like 20 minutes or so. Showed up, uh, not down here, but Parker Peak, Purple Mountain, Mary Lake, all picking up that same signature. That's, that's the only thing I can think of. Uh, no wind, no rain, no thunderstorms out there, and it's not showing up on a large scale. Now, if this was magma underneath the area, we would be seeing that reading showing up uh, significantly across all the seismograph stations. But this is, at the same time here, it looks like there's some type of instrument adjustment, amplitude uh, adjustment going on. We'll check back on that, though, a little bit later. Uh, not a whole lot of earthquake activity going on there for now, though. I don't think a Yellowstone supervolcano is in the uh, in the cards yet. Uh, oil fields out in the Texas area still seeing some movement. Uh, one little earthquake out in the New Madrid seismic zone here from yesterday. That's going to be a 2.1. Aside from that, the rest of the country out there looks pretty quiet. The big island of Hawaii. Well, what I thought was going to be uh, some further swarming going on there across the Aloha Seamount off the big island coast has come to a halt. Two earthquakes last night, 2.6 and the 2.9. These follow a swarm of earthquakes here in the area over the last week or so. I uh, kind of thought this was going to start stirring back up again, but it has gone uh, quiet. Not a whole lot of changing going on there across the area of the Big Island of Hawaii for now in terms of volcanic activity. And I still think, let's refresh this, make sure I got the most recent data. The UWE station up here is a tilt meter station. And that right there looks like it's still offline. The amplitudes here are so small and minute that it would not even, this is just, to me, I think this is still offline. Look at this odd reading every 24 hours or so. It looks like it's about ready to come back up and do its same thing again. That tells me that the station's offline, not registering accurate data. If you look at the deformation data here, uh, of course, I'm not in charge of monitoring this equipment, but, you know, this this activity went offline on the 13th of October here. That's what it should look like. It should be wavy lines, at least a little bit. We should see some type of uptick, whether it's um, inflation or deflation, but it's not. We're showing very low amplitudes here. And that right there tells me that... Uh, this is offline and it's been offline since this date, October 13th. The weekly chart's offline, the daily chart, the two day daily chart is offline. So um, these are not fixed. They're not, they have not been adjusted. If we look at, uh, let's see if this one's reading here. See, this one's going up. There's still inflation going on here. And that's, that's why I find it very important here that we get access to the public information here that these guys are supposed to take care of. They're, these uh, these instruments are being paid for by tax dollars here. So I want these instruments fixed, folks. Uh, USGS needs to jump on board here uh, to get these working. There's no, no reason for it to be offline here for almost a month, uh, and especially when we got uh, considerable activity potentially taking place underneath this region. There's not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening right now. A couple smaller quakes there across the Middle East Rift Zone. But uh, still, no reason uh, for those instruments to be offline for so long. I'll continue to check back on that. Okay, there's that 4.9 up there in uh, Canada, Dawson City area. Well, that's way east, northeast of Dawson City, 169 miles. Uh, Crow Camp Chatka Trench, 4.6 here. In the last hour, big time. Remember last night we were pointing this out, a trail of activity leading here across the area. I said to watch for further escalation following this event from yesterday. 5.0 East Chile Rise. This is a fracture zone out here. What takes place there in the fracture zone of the, uh, it's going to be the uh, uh, Antarctica plate and the interaction here with the Nazca plate. That puts a strain. Look at these general arrows on the Peru Chile Trench. And sure enough, 
We had a large earthquake out here this morning, a 6.2, right there where you would expect the strain to be along the Peru Chile Trench, six miles deep, um, about 3.30 in the morning or so. So that's, uh, I mean, I, I love seeing this play out perfectly like this because it's just, it's a sign here, you know, that uh, plate tectonics and the uh, review of how the motion and the pressure transfer takes place out here. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen more often than not. I'm still trying to get better here, folks. My uh, voice is a little crackly, but uh, we're getting better day by day. I can feel it. Another two-pointer up here, 2.9, it looks like, in the Alaska area. That's why I'm saying, folks, keep an eye here on the Aleutian Trench. There's a lot going on on a broad scale out here, even inland, away from the plate boundary. That tells me to watch this area out here across the region for larger movement. Uh, Fiji area, Tonga Trench, some deeper activity there, allowing for, uh, well, that should, that type of adjustment should further strain out here across the area of the Papua New Guinea region, Vanuatu, Solomon Islands, where it's awfully quiet right now. These are fairly new earthquakes as well. A couple smaller quakes here across the plate boundary in North Island, New Zealand. Aside from that, Japan, pretty quiet. And a little bit of activity off the coast here of Sumatra with some fours. Typical crunch zone going on out here across the Taiwan area southward. So we got a, a number of spots here to watch today. Uh, let's check out space weather activity real quick. See what's going on there. After a couple days of consecutive M flares here, we've dipped back below that level into the C flare category. But... Um, I think that's due to 3883 here starting to dissipate a little bit. Notice that the colors here are not quite intense and as popcornish or what's the word I'm looking for? Dotted. They're not quite as dotted and spectacular as they were a couple days ago when it was facing uh, back over here a little bit. So we're getting weakening within this sunspot core. Uh, it doesn't look like it's coming back either. So not really too concerned with this area anymore. Same with this one it's starting to weaken. Um, I guess we got to watch this area back here across the eastern quadrant of the sun. That's going to be 3889. That's harboring some potential there for some X flare probability. 35% chance for X flare, M flare 85, C flare around 99% chance or so. And uh, we're getting a little bit of a aurora activity here out of the blue. Not for sure why. Uh, could be from all the coronal holes that have been facing us here. 88. Uh, and a number of these sunspots that, or uh, coronal holes have been uh, in the Earth-directed view for a little bit. So these could be results of uh, the C the uh, aurora activity could be the result of all this uh, CME act. Not CME activity. Hello, it's Friday, not Monday. I'm so focused on trying to, you know, prevent my voice from cracking that uh, I'm not working this out right. Coronal holes, CMEs are the result of an explosion from a solar flare or a, a prominence type eruption. But uh, that, I believe that's what that is there from the coronal holes. A little bit of amplification there for the auroras, uh, but really not expecting much here. Uh, far as, uh, you know, the forecast goes here, as you can see, fairly quiet across the board. We'll continue to watch that one sunspot here, though, 3889, as it remains uh, fairly complex. A uh, slight risk here for some severe weather across uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area, it looks like. A 2% and 5% chance for tornado. Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth, Arlington area. Looks like maybe even a little bit of Oklahoma up here in the green zone. Uh, so watch out for some potential tornado activity. Aside from that, we got some wind and some hail threats out there, but really nothing big. Tomorrow, severe weather shifts a little bit further to the east. Not really expecting much in terms of severe potential, just general thunderstorm activity as we look at the weather models out here we got this hurricane uh, Raphael spinning out there in the Gulf of Mexico gonna get caught up a little bit in this low pressure system but not so much here looks like it wants to hold steady uh, but some of that moisture is gonna get pulled up here into the the Gulf Coast states with this low pressure trail bringing with it some precipitation um, after that uh, looks like that tropical system dissipates more rain for the Pacific Northwest and Northern California. And um, I've not seen any major significant winter storm for California. Most of this activity has been slamming 
into the Oregon and Washington area, just trailing a little bit across Northern California. Uh, I'm hoping that changes out there. We need the rain. Um, and, you know, I've seen a couple models here showing potentially another tropical system slamming into Florida as we head um, to the November, uh, looks like the 19th time period. We'll have to watch that. That's a ways out. Uh, too soon to take that seriously at, the, at this moment in time, but we'll continue to check back on that. All right, uh, I'm out of here, folks. Have yourself a glorious Friday. And, um, you know, just stay safe out there. Be prepared. Just because it's quiet right now here across California does not mean that uh, we're over yet with uh, the earthquake potential out here. Um, but uh, definitely keep an eye on the Aleutian Trench here. That's uh, a broad scale event taking place out here across this area. All right, we'll catch you guys back out here for the Friday night update. Also, the member drawing is coming up here real soon. On the 15th of November, we do this every single month. We give away prizes to uh, to our members, and that can consist of a $50 uh, gift card, Visa MasterCard of your choice, or if you want some Earth Master merchandise, that's also an option as well, or if you want a geology mining kit. If you're a rock hound like me, those come in handy when you're out and about in the mountains, maybe looking for some uh, crystals and whatnot. So that's coming up here on the 15th in a few days. Uh, get on board, jump on board to become a member today. We have three separate member levels. Choose one of your liking. We'll catch you guys back out here for the Friday night update. Stay safe, folks. Have a good day.